Meiosis, the big picture. What is meiosis? Why is it important? To help you study, I've put together a checklist that you can download at apbiosuccess.com slash checklist. Meiosis is how sexually reproducing eukaryotes, that includes animals, plants, fungi, protists, transmit genes from one generation to the next. It creates variation between parents and their offspring and it creates variation among the offspring. Describe the life cycle of sexually reproducing eukaryotes. In eukaryotes, adults have specialized tissues, testes and ovaries for creating gametes. Gametes are sperm and egg cells and they do that through this process that we'll be exploring called meiosis. The sperm fertilizes the egg and that produces a zygote or a fertilized egg. That zygote then divides and develops, the tissues differentiate to produce an adult organism. In relation to meiosis, compare haploid and diploid cells. These are super important terms for understanding meiosis. Parents have two sets of chromosomes in all of their body cells, with the exception of their gametes. Those chromosomes are paired. So like, for example, here's chromosome one. There are two of them. Here's chromosome two. There are two of them. One was inherited from one parent. One was inherited from the other. Those pairs are said to be homologous. And that's a term that we'll explain in the next slide. When parents pass on their chromosomes to the next generation, they can't pass all of them on. If they did, then the chromosome number would double in every generation. So what happens in meiosis is a halving of the number of chromosomes. And the half number of chromosomes kind of rhymes with the word half, or it begins with the same prefix. It's called haploid. So notice that there are four chromosomes down here. There are only two over here. What's the difference? The difference is what happened during meiosis, which is division of cells that involves reduction. Reduction division. Define homologous chromosomes. Homologous chromosomes are the matching chromosomes that you inherited from your parents. So for example, here's chromosome three. One of them came from your mom, one of them came from your dad. Here's chromosome four, it's the same thing. Here's chromosome five, all the way on down the line. They are not identical. How could they be? Your mom and dad aren't identical, so the chromosomes that they passed on to you wouldn't be identical. They do have the same genes in the same order, but the alleles, the specific code that is in the location where those genes are found, that might be different. Let's use the analogy of a gene as a recipe. Well, the one that you inherited from your mom, if that were a recipe for tomato sauce, maybe that one has a lot more garlic. And the one that you inherited from your dad, that might have a lot more basil in it. Well, let's now think more biologically. If C refers to a specific protein, then the DNA that's coding for a specific sequence of amino acids might be slightly different in what you inherit from your mom and your dad. And that might even be to the extent where the amino acid sequence of that protein differs. So the genes are the same, but the alleles might be different. That's what homologous means. Your success in AP Biology starts here. Are you struggling with AP Bio? With learn-biology.com, students get the skills and confidence to be a top student and earn fours and fives on the AP Bio exam, guaranteed. Go to learn-biology.com to find out how you can master your biology course and crush the AP Bio exam. More essential meiosis genetics vocabulary. Compare and contrast germ cells, gametes, and somatic cells. Germ cells are the diploid cells that are found in the testes and the ovaries that undergo meiosis. They produce gametes. And after meiosis, we have sperm and egg cells that are haploid. In a human being, the diploid number is 46. That's 23 pairs of chromosomes. In the haploid gametes, 
the chromosomes aren't paired anymore. So there are just 23 chromosomes in the sperm, 23 in the egg. Now the sperm goes ahead and fertilizes the egg, and that egg or zygote will divide, develop, the cells will differentiate, and what you'll wind up with are somatic cells. Those are the cells of the body, the diploid cells that make up the body tissues. Somatic cells are diploid, germ cells are diploid, gametes are haploid. What happens during meiosis? Meiosis is reduction division. Why reduction division? It's cell division that reduces chromosome number. Cells go from diploid with two sets of chromosomes to haploid with one set of chromosomes. The first step is DNA replication, which we see over here at number one. It creates doubled chromosomes consisting of two sister chromatids. What's going on? Even though meiosis is reduction division, it starts in exactly the same way that mitosis starts with a round of DNA or chromosome replication. So if you look at this cell over here, there are four chromosomes. If you look over here, there are still four chromosomes, but each one is doubled consisting of two sister chromatids. In step two, we have meiosis one. And what meiosis one does is it separates the homologous pairs. So this chromosome is homologous to this one, this one, this one, and they're gonna be separated. So now each of the resulting gametes only has one member of each homologous pair. That means it's now a haploid cell, but each chromosome is still doubled, and that's why we have meiosis II. What meiosis II does is it separates the sister chromatids. The result is four unique haploid gametes. Compare mitosis and meiosis. Mitosis consists of one round of cell division that separates the sister chromatids. The cells begin as diploid and they end as diploid. The daughter cells over here are clones of the parent cell. It's used for growth and repair. Meiosis consists of two cell divisions. Meiosis one over here separates homologous pairs. So here we have the doubled chromosomes, homologous pairs, they get separated in meiosis one. Meiosis two separates sister chromatids. We go from diploid to haploid, it's used to create gametes for reproduction. It introduces variation. The daughter cells are unique. Here are your next moves for AP BioSuccess. Please subscribe to learn-biology.com and please watch this next video.